Hi, welcome back y'all. Thank you once again for tuning in Mama Sanity. Um, I'm going to continue with the stories of, of course, encouragement, but in the attitude of how we look at things or troubles that come our way. And like I said, you know, at firsthand, I'm dealing with this on a daily basis. I'm trying to, something comes at me and I'm trying to see the positive in it and I'm trying to see it in a different light. Um, and have a better outlook and attitude toward things when they don't go according to plan or things just keep popping up here and there like, you know, this is happening, this is happening, it's just like, ah. Um, I'm really, really trying um, to see the silver lining. And so these stories that I find on Pinterest really, really help me to do that because these stories are like a huge slap in the face for me, like all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are because it, it is all in the attitude of which you see things through on and it affects others around you and I've told y'all that several times before and so I just I love these stories and I'm really pumped about um, all this so let me get started the attitude of happiness the 92 year old petite well poised and proud lady who is fully dressed each morning by 8 o'clock with her hair and makeup perfectly applied even though she is legally blind moved into a nursing home today her husband of 70 years recently passed, making the move necessary. After many hours of waiting patiently in the lobby of the nursing home, she smiled sweetly when I told her that her room was ready. As she maneuvered with her walker toward the elevator, I provided a visual description of her tiny room, including the eyelet sheets that had been hung on her window. I love it, she stated with enthusiasm of an eight-year-old having just opened a new puppy. Miss Jones, you haven't even seen the room yet, silly. Just wait. That doesn't have anything to do with it, she replied. Happiness is something that you decide ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not doesn't depend on how the furniture is arrayed, arranged. It is how I arrange my mind. I already decided to love it. It is a decision I make every morning when I wake up. I have a choice. I can spend the day in bed recounting the difficulties that I have with the parts of my body that don't work any longer, or I can get out of bed and be thankful for the ones that do work. Each day is a gift, and as long as my eyes open, I promise myself that I will focus on the new day and all the happy memories that I have stored away just for these times in my life. That is is the biggest slap in the face for me because I try really, really hard to be positive. And I know they say the more that you try to do something, the more the enemy is going to come and the more you'll probably fail. And so it's an everyday battle of before I even get out of bed, I have to say, God, I need you to help me today. I need you to help me see the goodness in today because I already hear before I get out of bed, I hear my kids screaming and yelling and fighting out in the kitchen in the living room. And there's times where I refuse to even, I just lay there like talking to God because I refuse to, to even get out of bed until all that stops. But I'm not going to let it ruin my day. And this is a, a daily struggle, a daily battle for me. And this story was very, very powerful. And I, that's why I wanted to share it with you because like this old woman said, it is a choice. She's gonna love that room no matter how the furniture's arranged because she has told herself she's gonna love it. And we go through difficult things in life and we let our circumstances affect our attitude. And so, you know, you get a certain diagnosis at the doctor or you don't have money to pay your bills or you lost that job or you didn't get that promotion or something. And yes, we have every right to feel the way we feel. We can't help it. Those are our feelings, right? But we still have a choice. We have a choice to say, okay, I took my little pity party for a few minutes what was me now i'm going to come out of it and i'm choosing to live life and not dwell on what's wrong but think about what is going correct in my life and what is going right and what is 
happy in my life and I'm going to focus on that. So um, the quote I have for you today is, you are responsible for your happiness. In fact, you create it. You attract it. You manifest it. You are the architect of your reality. You choose your thoughts, your perceptions, and your reactions to external forces. You possess all the tools needed to expand your awareness, to orchestrate the elevation of your consciousness, to choose happiness, to choose love. You are that powerful. Create the life you deserve. Vibrate love and happiness. I love that quote because like I said earlier, you do, you have a choice. You can choose to wallow in your pity party and but you just don't understand and this is happening to me. And trust me, I get it. There's a lot of unfairness in this life, but you will come through it. There's a middle part. You're gonna have to go through some sucky crap, but you're gonna come through it stronger on the other side. And while you're going through that yucky crap, you need to choose to have a good attitude. So the next story I want to share with you, it's kind of funny, but I can associate this in everybody's daily lives. At a restaurant, a cockroach suddenly flew from somewhere and sat on a lady. She started screaming out of fear. With a panic-stricken face and trembling voice, she started jumping with both of her hands desperately flying to get rid of the cockroach. Her reaction was contagious, as everyone in her group was also got panicky. The lady finally managed to push the cockroach away, but it landed on another lady in the group. Now that lady continued the drama. The waiter rushed toward her to rescue, to her rescue, and in the relay of throwing the cockroach, next fell upon the waiter. The waiter stood firm, composed himself, and observed the behavior of the cockroach on his shirt. When he was confident enough, he grabbed it with his fingers and threw it out the restaurant. Sipping my coffee, I watched the amusement. The antenna of my mind picked up a few thoughts, and I started wondering, was the cockroach responsible for their behavior? If so, then why was the waiter not disturbed? He handed it near perfection without any chaos. <clears throat> it is not the cockroach, but the inability of the ladies to handle the disturbance caused by the cockroach that disturbed the ladies. I realize it is not the shouting of my father or my boss or my wife that disturbs me, but it is my inability to handle the disturbances caused by their shouting that disturbs me. It is not the traffic on the road that disturbs me, but my inability to handle the disturbance caused by the traffic jam that disturbs me. More than the problem, it is my reaction to the problem that creates chaos in my life. Enough said, right? Mind blown, it says it all. Five daily reminders for my quote. One, I am amazing. Two, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. Three, positivity is a choice. Four, I will celebrate my individuality because I'm cray-cray. And five, I am prepared to succeed. These five daily reminders should be on your daily reminder list. You should see yourself as wonderful. You should choose to be positive. You should choose to succeed. And things are gonna come at us and things are gonna happen. And we all deserve the right to take that five minute pity party and just scream. I told my husband the other day, I'm having one of those days where I just wanna scream and cry at the top of my lungs. Just cause I was just, I was emotional. And we all have that right. Get it done, scream at a pillow, do whatever you have to do for a few minutes, and then choose to be positive and choose to live in happiness. I have, I'm sorry this is long-winded, but I have several quotes that I found on Pinterest that I just wanna share with you to end our session for today. So the first one is, I will breathe. I will give God my problems. I will not let worry control me. 
I will not let my stress level break me. I will simply pray. I know it'll be okay because I don't quit and I trust God. Oh my gosh, I need this every single morning. These I need just need to wake up and read all these quotes because that is true. I've told you, I'm like the most cray-cray worrisome frantic and I've gotten way better over the years, but I still need to get better at it. And so I just need to say, yep. Yeah give it to you. And truly, that is another thing that I've learned. Okay, so I give things to God and I cast my cares on him and I give it, but then I start worrying about it a couple days, a couple weeks later. So did I really give it to him? So I really need to try and focus on that and give it to him. Thanks work out for the best for those who make the best of the way things worked out. John Wooden. I rather attempt to do something great and fail than to attempt to do nothing and succeed. Robert H. Schuler. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Wayne Dyer. The best way to forget the bad things in life is to learn to remember the good things. Mark Amen. You don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. Zig Ziglar. Why do we close our eyes when we pray, cry, dream, or kiss? Because we know the most beautiful things in life are not seen, but felt by the heart. Anne Sullivan. Never get tired of doing things for others, for sometimes those little things occupy the biggest part of their heart. Ida Azair. Fear has two meanings. Forget everything and run, or face everything and rise. The choice is yours. Always remember the point, these points. Pain is part of growing. Everything in life is temporary. Worrying and complaining changes nothing. Your scars are symbols of your strength and every little struggle is a step forward. Others people negativity, that's not your problem. What's meant to be will eventually be. And the best thing you can do is to keep going. So that's all I have for you this week, and until next time, I hope y'all have a wonderful week and stay safe.